when you really love somebody, they're always a part of you. There's a presence that they have, even when you move on and maybe you never wind up together, but they are a part of you. And this wasn't about Ben and I, this story. This was about this hopeless romantics journey uh, through life in their search for love. I learned the hard way. Not all love stories have a happy ending. No one else in the world could pull this off. No one, <laughs> literally no one. You wrote it, where did the idea come from? When did you start? Yeah, I think once the album was done, obviously um, I did This Is Me Then 20 years ago. Uh, never thought there would be a This Is Me Now. It kind of captured a moment in time when I first kind of experienced this type of love and then had a second chance at it and got very inspired to go into the studio and make this record. When I made the record and it was done, which kind of happened in a couple of months, I was like, wow, this is a very special, magical moment right now. I, I don't think this is just like throw out a video and do that thing, like the normal. I wanna do something really different with this. So I called Dave Myers and uh, I sat down, I played him some of the music. He says I sang some of the music to him too. <laughs> and, and then, um, I told him, I was like, you know, I made this album 20 years ago and this is all the stuff and now we're here. But he was like, well, that's the story, really. The story you just told me is the story. I said, I don't want to tell the story of Ben and I. People know that story. I want to do something different. And so we kind of embarked upon how do we do that in a visual kind of singing, dancing, um, funny, lifelike way. I'm glad you said funny because there is a sense of humor <laughs> yeah. about it. What are you guys doing here? We think you might be a sex addict. Every time I see you. What? Maybe. We've never seen Jennifer Lopez like that before. <laughs> Tell me what, first of all, why that was important for you to- Because life is funny. Yeah, yeah. The most heartbreakingly great moments in life are, you know, is when you're like crying and laughing at the same time. Like, to me, life is really funny and I think maybe that's why I love romantic comedies, and not that this is anything close to a romantic comedy, but those moments for me are the ones in life that are really, you know, you, you have to be able to laugh at yourself. You have to, because it's absurd sometimes, the things that you find yourself in or that you go through, or you're like, I never thought I would be this person. How did this happen? And it's like, that's hysterical, but it's also heartbreaking. You know what I mean? So that, part of life, that reality of life, is something that I really wanted to put in here. She was compelled to do it. She was compelled. I've never known anyone like this, seen anyone like this, and all you could do as her partner and her friend was hang on. It was Jennifer's vision, and it was difficult to understand it. People didn't really understand what it was. And we didn't have, you know, endless funds from a studio. This was a very independent project that I was self-financing. It was a challenging project in that way. It's like there could have never been enough money for the project. Sure. Everybody thought I was crazy yeah. when I said I would do it. Yeah. We did have financing and then that fell out. They pulled out at the last minute. And then it was that moment where you go, okay, do we just make a video or do we do we go ahead and do this thing? I decided that I, I wanted to see this vision through. You feel like nobody gets you. I don't even get me. This is me. The songs poured out of her when she wrote them. They poured out of her. And it was electric to watch that as it was happening. And she had to do it. So when the, it, the money fell out, it wasn't, it was just, I was terrified. She understood that she had to do it. She understood it was a fool's errand to finance your own thing. And, um, and, wow. and, yet, and yet sometimes the fool is the genius because you're following your heart, mm. right? And this really is her heart. Well, it shines through. Can, Thank you. Because I have to ask you about the um, cameos. Yes, the diacal cameos. And then Mr. Rex Stone. Again, when you're doing kind of this kind of surrealistic magical, you know, odyssey, you, you can have a lot of creative license. What I wanted to put in there was kind of the Greek chorus of everyone's life, right? So we have this protagonist who's like this hopeless romantic, and then she has, you know, the people in her life who are commenting, her friends, her family, 
uh, and then everybody else, your coworkers. In my case, it could be the media, it could be any, right? This guy don't stand a chance. And you have this, these people kind of like commenting, not that they're not rooting for you, they're actually rooting for you, right? But they have an opinion. And, and then this idea of like, when you really love somebody, they're always a part of you. There's a presence that they have, even when you move on and maybe you never wind up together, but they are a part of you. And this wasn't about Ben and I, this story. This was about this hopeless romantics journey uh, through life in their search for love. But there was a presence. And how did we kind of have that presence of this person that was the heartbreak that we talk about in the beginning? And so we came up with this device of this person in the background who was a presence, but not really in their life. This is my